interesting little gadgets. You probably have seen these. If you tried to buy one, you may not know how it works, or more than likely you haven't received one that would work. Uh, this one is broken. When mine showed up, it looked like it was run over by a truck. And it has some pieces broken to where it won't track properly on the rotor blades. The way this works, it has an infrared emitter on one side and a sensor on the other. When it gets close to a solid object, it can detect the infrared signal. It speeds up, it takes off. When it gets up high enough, it no longer receives its own signal. It starts to power down. And you're supposed to get your hand underneath there to try and control the height up and down. Good luck with that. We'll, uh, we'll see how this works here. It actually has a fairly narrow range of operation if it's over something solid. This little piece up here on the top has got a couple little plastic tits on it. That is supposed to be engaged in a piece on this side and in a hole on this side. Let's see if I can get those back in there. I was able to get that back in there and now that works on the teeter-totter as it should. That one's working and this one's working. The only thing remote control about this is being able to turn it on and off with this little infrared transmitter. You can see that bottom fly bar is working. The top one's not doing much of anything. We can see that the fly bars are not at right angles to the rotor blades. The action of the fly bar precedes that of the blade. If this guy is remaining vertical, the rotor shaft is vertical, the fly bar will act as a gyroscope and it will remain horizontal. If he tilts to this side, relative to him, that fly bar is going to drop and it increases the angle of attack on the blade on this side, which brings us back to level. And that's the action of both of these. It's supposed to stay stationary in the air. This thing's had the heck beat out of it. This is this operates very freely. This one here is quite stiff and it's it's not doing its job. There's still something binding up in here. I did try flying this outside while it was calm. This will not tolerate any wind at all. And it just won't fly. It'll take off and then veer off to one side and crash. And this will not survive very many crashes. These parts on the rotor head and the blades are not very strong. This is held together by six screws. And if you look at the listings for these, that's one of the differences you'll notice. How many screws are in the back, the pattern of the screws. Some have a thumb sticking out like this, some don't. There'll be a difference in the charging port and the switch. And there will be differences on the front. The eyes, the direction of the eyes, the color of the mouth, the pattern down here. So there are quite a few variations or knockoffs on these things floating around. And I'm not sure which one is supposedly original. So we have a circuit board in here. When you plug this in to your USB on your computer, this is an infrared emitter and a sensor. This thing the motor assembly plugs into three little holes here. There's some pins in there and that comes out. You got wires going to the LEDs and a single motor that's running a transmission. The pinion on the motor is driving two sets of gears that are reduced and one leads to this outside shaft which is the lower set of rotor blades and the other one leads to the other shaft which is the upper and they're turning in the opposite directions, counter-rotating. Little lithium battery pack. And that is it. When you put it back together, 
these three pins go into these three holes. There's really nothing user serviceable unless you happen to find a wire that's disconnected. You could resolder that. Put it back together. Get everything lined up. Reinstall the six tiny screws. I know you're familiar with the picture puzzles where you find the differences between two pictures. Go to eBay and look for the listing for Despicable Me Minion Helicopter and find the differences. Differences in the mouth, what's down here, the way that the eyes are pointed, a thumb or no thumb, how many screws on the back, the difference in the charging port and where the switch is. Sometimes those are separate. And look for how many differences there are in a given listing. Whoever is selling these picks up a handful of pictures and throws them onto the listing and they're not even the same item. So if you think one of these is worth $12 or $15, have fun. Mine doesn't fly and if it crashes, you're probably going to get one crash and this rotor head is going to fall apart. Buyer beware.